Say we have a function that we know has roots, but that are analytically impossible to find. In this case, we're going to have to employ different techniques. Now say that we take a function, f of x equals cos x minus x, we clearly see that this has a root, but we can also see that the equation cos x minus x equals zero cannot be solved using standard techniques. The root here sits between zero and one. So if we take this as the initial interval of where our root sits, known as the bracket of our root, then we can contemplate how we could find smaller or more accurate brackets of the root. Say we take the midpoint of this initial bracket, 0 0.5, and now see where the root sits. Clearly, the root is within the 0 0.5 and 1 section. So if we take this to be the new bracket, we see that we have a more accurate estimate of where the root falls. If we repeat this, taking a midpoint of each new bracket and finding which side the root sits, then we can see how gradually we can attain a better and better estimate of our root, with each new iteration halving our bracket size. Doing this for our function f of x equals cos x minus x, we can find the root to be around 0 0.739085, just using a handful of iterations. This general idea is known as the bisection method, so let me introduce you formally. For this method, we start by setting an initial bracket, a0 and b0, surrounding the root. Then we find the midpoint, cn, which is just bn minus an over 2, and then we use this to see which side the root sits. If the root sits to the right of cn, we just move an to where cn has just been, or alternatively, if it sits to the left, we just move bn to where cn has just been. We then iterate this process a certain amount of times, or up to a specified tolerance where we are happy with the accuracy of our estimated bracket. Once this is all done, we take the final value of cn to be the estimated root. The n part of these values here is used to denote iteration number, hence why we set a0 and b0 for our initial guess. A method where we approximate a solution to a problem using an iterative or discretized approach is known as a numerical method and we usually solve these using computers to iterate these algorithms. Whilst the bisection method is effective and robust, meaning it doesn't usually run into errors, it can be quite slow. Returning to our function f of x equals cos x minus x equals zero, if we rewrite this with y instead of f of x and rearrange such that we have y equals x, then if we create a new function g of x with the remaining equation, in this case just being cos x, then we can see that where our original function f of x has a root, the new function g of x intersects with y equals x. We can then iterate upon this g of x function to find our root. We will see this visually in a second, but first we introduce this algorithm as the fixed point iteration method. As we have seen, to perform this method, we first rearrange our f of x equals zero function to establish a new function g of x equals x. If we then set an initial guess close to the root and call this x0, then we finally iterate upon g of x using the formula xn plus 1 equals g of xn, with n denoting the iteration number as we saw with the bisection method before. For our example g of x we found earlier, if we set our initial guess x0 to be 0 0.5, then by the iterative formula we have just shown, the next estimate x1 will be equal to cos 0.5 which is just 0.878, as shown here, which is equivalent to drawing a line up from 0.5 up to the g of x curve, drawing a line across to y equals x, and then drawing a line down. If we then repeat this process to find x2, we start to attain a more accurate estimate of our root. For this function g of x, the convergence spirals towards the root, as shown here with the root at the 100th iteration being the same as found by the bisection method to six significant figures. As I just mentioned, for the example g of x, the method converged in a spiral fashion. This is not always the case as can be seen here, with a method converging to a root through a staircase-like fashion. With both this staircase and spiral convergence depending on the gradient of g of x around the root, if this is positive, it leads to a staircase, whereas if it's negative, it ends up producing a spiral. With the case of g of x equals cos x, if we differentiate this, we get minus sin x, and hence is negative around the root, which is why we get the spiral convergence. The fixed point method can converge quicker to the root than the bisection method, but it does come with some instabilities when concerned with convergence.
but we will visit this later on. Moving on, we contemplate a different approach to finding a root. Instead of having a set function, we take a generic function f of x, which we clearly see has a root. Now, consider taking a good first guess at the root to be x0, and define h to be the difference between our first guess and the actual root. Clearly, the root must just equal x0 plus h. Therefore, f evaluated at the root is the same as f evaluated at x0 plus h, with both being 0. Now using a simple Taylor series approximation, just cut off after the first differential, we see that f of x0 plus h can be approximated as f of x0 plus h times the differential of f evaluated at x0. Therefore, this Taylor series approximation also approximates 0. We can rearrange this to make h the subject to see that h is just approximately minus f of x0 over f dash at x0, where the dash in this case just means the differential of f. Now returning to our original equation, we can substitute h back in to find that the root can be approximated as x0 minus f of x0 over f dash x0. Because this is just an approximation of our root, we take the approximation and then use this as x1. In this case, we find the iterative formula to be x of n plus 1 equals xn minus f of xn over f dash xn. To see how this works visually, we start by finding the tangent to f at x0 and use this to find where the tangential line intersects with the x-axis. Then, where this intersection occurs is the new point x1. If we repeat this process, finding the tangent and then finding the intersection point, we can see how gradually we converge to the root. This method is known as the Newton-Raphson method, or just the Newton method. It generically converges far quicker to the root than the bisection or fixed point iteration methods, but the quick convergence poses more issues as we will see later. This transitions well into the second section of this video, where we look at the cases where each of the three schemes converge to a root. Firstly, consider the bisection method. As we mentioned earlier, this is the most robust scheme. As long as we only have a single root sitting within the bracket, then this will always converge. The main issue of this scheme is speed, and therefore the other two methods may be favoured. Leading on from this, for the fixed point iteration method, we need to figure out what causes this to converge. To do this, we need to define an error term of the scheme at each step, and then figure out what we need to do to make this error term shrink and hence converge to the root. Firstly, recall for this method we have defined two functions, f of x equals 0, and rearrange this to produce a new function, g of x equals x. At the root of our function f, it is the case that g evaluated at the root will produce the root itself. Now, if we define the error at each step, e of n, to be x of n minus the root, then this is also equal to g evaluated at x of n minus 1, minus g evaluated at the root. We now use the mean value theorem, which is not proved within this video, but if you want to understand why this result occurs, I urge you to do some of your own research. Using the mean value theorem, we find that there exists a number c such that the differential of g evaluated at c equals g of x n minus 1 minus g of the root over x of n minus 1 minus the root, with both top and bottom of this fraction being different versions of our error term. Replacing this with their respective iteration number, we see that g dash c of n minus 1 equals e of n over e of n minus 1. Rearranging and taking absolute values, we see that we get an expression of error, where we clearly see that for each new iteration, the error is influenced by this absolute value of g dash at c n minus 1. We now use this to define the convergence criteria of the fixed point method. Hence, we need the absolute value of g dash cn to be less than 1, with cn being all values within a bracket ab surrounding the root, which makes sense for the function g of x equals cos x that we had earlier, where we can verify that in the bracket ranging from 0 0.7 to 0 0.8 where our root lies, the absolute value of g is always less than 1. Now, when looking for the convergence criteria for the newton raphson method, we use a different approach. Clearly the root has been found if xn equals xn minus 1. So if we call this value c of n, then inputting this into the newton raphson equation, we see that minus c of n over f dash c of n equals 0. 
Now adding C of n to both sides, we get a familiar looking expression. Say we define this as a function g, now this may look more familiar. This is the formula we had for the fixed point iteration method with respect to the roots being at Cn. Hence, using the result of convergence for the fixed point iteration method, we see that we need the absolute value of this function g to be less than 1. Differentiating this middle expression, we see that the requirement for convergence is that the absolute value of f times the second differential over the first differential squared, all evaluated at Cn, needs to be less than 1. Whereas before, Cn is within a and b and a and b brackets the root. I hope you enjoyed the video today and learned something new. If you did, please consider liking the video and subscribing as these both really help. Thank you for joining me today and see you next time.